Good evening. It is 5.04 on January the 5th. We're here for a special board meeting. Janet, would you please um, take roll call, please? Trustees present this evening are Trustee Real, Lorenzo Calderon, Jr., Ortega, and Ciro Calderon. You have a quorum. Thank you, Janet. Would you please stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance? Item A1 and A2. Item B, comments from the public. The board will take any and all comments from the public related to the sole item on the agenda. Do we have any public from the comment? Request for oral communication? Going once, going twice. Okay, so no, uh, no public comments. Item C. Board member vacancy interview and appointment process. So at this point, we're gonna start with C1. We're going to start with the interview uh, process, or with the interview, the interview uh, part of our, of our meeting where our candidates will have a chance to speak <coughs> on the various questions that uh, they were provided with or subjects. Maria? Yes, I believe that all of the uh, candidates that are present tonight received uh, a, oh, that there, there are a list of six questions for the interview uh, candidates to address this evening, and they are to go through the six questions, um, just address each one as they go, and um, you will rate those questions. Uh, each individually and uh, they will have 10 minutes to address their six questions that I believe they are at the podium Two minutes each. so that will be 10 minutes each and yes 10 minutes each 10 minutes each and again it's just for you for the candidates to provide input on those specific items that we are requesting okay does it necessarily mean that you have to respond with a whole essay for the whole question, but basically just give us an idea, give us a, an outline of what is it okay. that you think about those questions. Okay. And the way the questions will be addressed will be just in the alphabetical order of the names of our candidates. Oh, so we would be starting with Ms. Aguilar, then Mr. Castillo. Michael Castillo, then Mr. Vincent Cuevas, then Mr. Orlando Espino, Mr. Bill Hodge, Mr. Victor Legaspi, Mr. Javier Moreno, and then Mr. Ms. Callahan Ramirez. Thank you. So, board, are we ready? Yes. Okay. okay. So at this point, Ms. Aguilar, you're the first one, given the uh, alphabetical uh, last name order. Good evening, board. <clears throat> it was my understanding that there was also a three-minute speech or introduction also included. Yeah, Correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, good evening. My name is Norma Aguilar. I am a resident of Calexico, 839 Hebrew Avenue. Um, I served on this board from 2010 to 2014, and I have um, the pleasure of being in your interview today, so I'm ready for the questions. So, oh, okay. So, the well, question is, if appointed tonight for the next 11 months, what would be something you wish to accomplish and how you would do it? And one of the things that I think is important to us as a district is to having an adequate pool of substitutes when we um, are starting each year. Uh, every year, we're, we, we've ended up short, unless I'm mistaken, 
that hasn't changed. And I, I would think that it would be good to work together with human resources and identify um, ways to recruit credentialed teachers earlier. That could mean working in collaboration with teacher education in San Diego State, a process that's happening now internally. <clears throat> Second one is how you would improve, how would you improve student achievement and student climate at the site? It seems to me that it's important that achievement begins with students and teachers having the necessary tools for education. We still have classrooms with outdated books and materials, and in particular with limited English students. Improving student climate, it makes sense to conduct student surveys and provide the opportunity for students to have input. What questions do you have the board to help you prepare to take on this task if chosen? I don't have questions at, at this moment. In current fiscal times, how would you prioritize expenditures to ensure quality services and student safety? I would ensure that we have updated books and technology, that we transition to paperless registration of students. What specific knowledge and experiences do you have that make you the best candidate for this position? I have four years of experience on the board during hard times, 2010 to 2014, during which time we were almost taken over by the state in receivership and we managed to ev ev evade that situation. I have excellent research skills. I have in-depth knowledge of Ed Code, Robert's Rules, and Board Policy. If appointed, is it your intent to run for board in two th November 2016? I would seriously consider it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aguila. Next on the uh, on on this list will be Mr. Michael Castillo. Good evening, and thank you again for the opportunity to be here tonight. I think before we even begin, I think it's just to, I want to recognize everybody that's put their, their hat in the in the you know next candidate here. It's not an easy job. Uh, not easy to consider, but a selfish, you know, task that I think you know, our citizens uh, contribute. So, just want to recognize everybody for uh, participating tonight. Um, I think introduction. Uh, there was a, some time. Uh, again, my name is Michael Castillo. Uh, like many uh, citizens born here in Calexico, went to school here in Calexico, uh, returned after college, uh, started teaching in this district. Uh, we Moreno at the high school sometimes. Uh, so again, very familiar with the district, uh, a lot of the staff, the programs and services. Um, I, after the district, I've moved on to uh, working at the County Office of Education in various programs, from uh, learning technologies to early care education, and now most recently, uh, school administrator in El Centro, working in the middle school uh, with our students, or their students, on a lot of the similar issues. Um, I think, again, I think, in addition, you know, I, I, did, I did serve at, uh, on the board a couple years ago uh, through similar times, challenging times, uh, but always keeping students and the district, you know, first and foremost, uh, making sure uh, we made it through. Um, presently, I do have three children in the district uh, attending various schools, their various grade levels. Uh, so always interested in wanting to make sure that students, again, in Calexico have opportunities uh, for higher education, uh, post-secondary opportunities, and now 21st century, 21st century opportunities as well. So I'll begin with the questions tonight. <clears throat> Number one, if appointed, what would be something, if appointed for the next 11 months, what would be something you would want to accomplish and how would you do it? You know, 11 months is not a long time. Yeah, that'll go by quick. Uh, I think there's short-term goals, long-term goals. One in the short, well, in the short and long-term goals, you know, the district's already identified their LCAP goals. You know, that's already been vetted through the community, through staff, uh, student input. So I think it's important that we continue with those LCAP goals because that's, it's already been board approved. Uh, in the 11 months, I think we keep true to those goals, those priorities, but also in this short period, I think it's important that we also monitor those goals and activities 
and the expenditures as well. Um, in the short term, I think uh, one thing I think that's important is really looking at helping improve uh, some of the, the image of the district and of the community. You know, Calexico and school district has a lot to offer. There's a lot of good things happening here, and I don't think we often celebrate those enough or disseminate that in our community. There's a lot of good things happening here. So I think the more we can uh, uh, share those with our community in town and in the valley uh, would really help the district. And that's short-term and long-term goal. <coughs> Certainly there's smaller things that could be accomplished. You know, if we're looking at attendance. Uh, there's recently the uh, attendance initiative district-wide. That might be, you know, that's a real short-term goal that the district could jump on. As well, you know, looking at STEM and college and career initiatives, or even the uh, seal of financial literacy. Those can be some short-term ones. And I think you've already identified a lot of those. Question number two, how would you improve student achievement and school climate at the sites? Student achievement, you know, that's first and foremost our job here. Um, important, I think, is to stay true and looking at our uh, curriculum. There's a lot of plans, a lot of discussion about the adoption of new materials, uh, making sure we have textbooks, uh, that it's gone through you know, uh, approvals or our district committees. But I think the adoption of curriculum is important now that we're going through Common Core and that transition. Uh, it's not just the materials, but also the assessments, the curriculum mapping or the benchmark that goes with that, uh, but the professional development that's also important as well. So our teachers, our staff know how to truly implement uh, these materials uh, to prepare our students for what's coming. Um, for student achievement, uh, again, looking at the sites, I think, you know, big discussion is the grade span uh, level adjustments. Um, personnel is certainly a big issue, making sure we have the right teachers, making sure we look at our class size uh, numbers uh, according to our school sites so, you know, our students can have the best instruction at appropriate ratios. And of course, parent involvement is always key for a student achievement. You know, they have to be partners in their student's education. As far as climate, you know, I think right now, certainly looking at our data, our suspension data, expulsion data, attendance, what can we look at at the sites? Whether it be looking at Umar's report, that way. Um, looking at safe school plans and bullying, those are issues that can be visited or addressed. Um, and again, looking at the attendance, how can we improve that? Um, at the school sites, positive behavior interventions and supports. Uh, what programs do we have for those or initiatives are the, is the board looking at to support students, uh, interventions for academic and climate improvement, and of course, uh, the array of interventions that can be placed at the school sites to support students. Question three, what questions do you have for the board? Uh, two questions, and I don't, I don't know, for the sake of time, we probably won't get answers, but one, uh, just the First question is, you know, there's been two, there have been two vacancies in the last couple months. Um, so I think one question would be, what type of candidate are you looking for to fill the seat? And I don't think we need an answer or have time for an answer, but that's just a thought. What are you looking for? Um, second question would be, um, what are the goals that the board has set for themselves? Have you set goals as well? You know, aside from the district plan, the LA plan or LCAP, what goals has the, has the board set uh, aside from those? Number four, in current fiscal times, how would you prioritize and ensure the quality educational services and student safety? Again, 11 months is not a long time. It is and it isn't. Uh, I think right now, as far as fiscal um, priorities, always monitoring the budget, expenditures. You know, we've got um, Prop 30. We've got the budget actually being released on Thursday, I believe, Thursday morning now. The governor's releasing the budget, so let's take a look at that. Uh, what does that have in store for education? I think it's going to be a little better. You know, it's an election year in California, so uh, as far as politics, it should be better for our budget. Prop 30 certainly helped the district a couple years ago with that. Um, but I think we need to stay the course. Uh, as far as educational service and student safety, I think I'm going to go back to the LCAP because that's already been identified. It's already been approved, and you already have a plan. You've already got funding to back that up. So, again, we need to stay the course and make sure we improve the, uh, continue with that. Um, question five, what specific knowledge and experience do you have uh, that make you the best candidate for this position? Um, again, uh, served a term on the school board, so very familiar with uh, this room, the meetings, um, as well as some of the procedures, you know, familiar with Brown Act, Robert's Rules of Orders, board policies, administrative regulations, uh, 
So that, you know, we'll continue. Um, as far as knowledge and experience, I think, you know, it's not always easy to make some of the decisions up here. Uh, it's not always easy, uh, but you got to do what's right for the kids. Gathering all the data information, uh, making the best decisions you can with what you have. <clears throat> and, of course, working as a governance board, working as a team uh, to make the decisions for us. Experience, again, uh, as an educator, I've been in the field for 20-plus years, uh, teaching in the middle school and some high school, worked and uh, developed programs for children 0 to 5, uh, taught at university, higher ed, uh, for a number of years, uh, familiar with CTA, CSEA, uh, planning, or um, your administrators in AXA, CSBA as well that you're familiar with, um, and even personnel committee a bit as well. So familiar with these groups. And there's really some experience working on other boards in the community. If question number six, last question, if appointed, would you consider or intend to run in 2006? I think first and foremost is I want to see what's right for the district, you know, uh, that the district and the school board has qualified candidates. Come election time, you know, I want to, be, I want to see if there are qualified candidates uh, that can continue, you know, with the mission, the objectives of the district. Um, I want to see what's, you know, what's good for the district. Uh, at that time, you know, if I, in my opinion, if I see that uh, maybe some assistance is needed, then yes, I would consider I would consider it. Again, my, I think my priority and intent is just to make sure the district has uh, qualified individuals, qualified candidates, to ensure that the mission continues, the services continue, and we do what's right for kids in Calexico. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Castillo. Next on our list is Mr. Vincent Cuevas. Good evening. First of all, I want to refer to the election of November 6, 2012. That was the day that democracy faltered. The precinct of uh, Cesar Chavez did not have enough ballots and hundreds of people did not get to vote in that national election. I brought the issue up to the county, and uh, as I can see, they poo-pooed it and didn't really respond to the need of having fair elections. I also lost in that election. I ran for school board. I lost by, by very few votes, and, uh, and I have returned to see if I could run again. My name is Ori Given, and uh, I'm from Calexico. If appointed tonight for the next 11 months, what would be something you would want to accomplish, and how would you do it? Teachers require more training in the school district, more training in integrating technology into their lesson plans, especially for English learners. I would like to see the high school Remodernize, especially the cafeteria. I would like to see the foundations for a new high school started in Calexico. How would you improve student achievement and student climate at the sites? First of all, work and trust your administrators and teachers. Second, know the school district's mission, vision, statement, and be successful and achieve its goals. In each school site, teachers and administrators will analyze data on student achievement to improve weaknesses and implement those changes. Each school site, according to grade level, will analyze achievement by asking each other, what did you teach to achieve that goal? Led by the administrators, teachers will share their accomplishments and defeats, instilling an obligation to do what's best for the students. We would have to allow for these meetings by having substitutes in the classroom. After analyzing data with staff, involve students by sharing data and set goals for improvement and utilizing a, a bulletin board in the classroom with 
Students taught, mastered, and reviewed. Use outcomes with rewards and celebrations. Increased rigor in lesson plans for the school. Climate students and staff feel safe and comfortable. Classrooms are orderly. The grounds are clean. The noise level is low. Classrooms are visible and inviting. Staff members have sufficient textbooks and supplies. What questions do you have for the board to help you prepare to take on this commitment if chosen? How are we going to work together? It's not productive to excommunicate members of the board using social media. If I'm on the board, we will work together. We should look at how to communicate in all forms, including social media. In current fiscal times, how will you prioritize expenditures to ensure quality educational services and student safety? First priority is our students' education, health, and safety. That's my priority. How do we implement the mission? You have to have good trained teachers in order to accomplish the mission. Instead of proctors, we should have a school district police force trained as policemen. They're at the school site provided by grants done by, per se, Northern Arizona University via the Economic Commission for the City who has a proposed MOU with Northern Arizona University for free grant writing and consulting. We're the largest school district in the valley. Why can't we have full-time police officers controlled by the school district and a good example is San Diego State University. What specific knowledge and experiences do you have that make you the best candidate for this position? I have 32 years of teaching experience. That gives me the insight into how to improve the schools. I am retired and will dedicate my full time to the office of school board member. I'm also well connected to the community. I'm Vice Chairman of the Historical Commission for the City of Calexico. If appointed, is it your intent to run for board in November 2016? Yes, it is my intent to run for school board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cuevas. Next on our list is Mr. Orlando Espino. Hi, good evening. Do I start off with my, my statement first? Yeah. Well, my name is Orlando Espino. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Calexico. I'm a product and alumni of Calexico High School. And today I'm here because I, I'm seeking everybody's support to be appointed to the school board. I found myself in this position about three years ago, and, you know, f for one reason or another, I was not given the opportunity, but however, you know, I'm back. Um, I've been in public service ever since I graduated high school. I went straight to uh, the Marine Corps and served my time there. Um, after that, I went to the University of California, Riverside, where I used the same skills that I learned here in Calexico to achieve and getting my degree up in Riverside. From that point on, um, my life has been involved in public service at one facet or another. After graduating, I was a substitute teacher in Riverside while I waited for my wife to graduate from over there, who's also an alumni from here. Came back over here to the Valley because I wanted to return to, to my, uh, my hometown. And I, be, I became a substitute teacher for actually for this district. So I, I was here maybe about a little less than a year um, teaching various subjects from kindergarten all the way to high school. And so it, 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 it increased my, my, my interest in, in, in this, in this uh, profession. Um, after that, I was, a community, I was a substitute teacher for a community school. I was there for long term, working with um, at-risk youth. After that, um, I became a law enforcement officer, which is something I've been doing for the last six years. And it's that same uh, profession were, um, of public service that I want to return and continue 
in public service. I'm a stakeholder in this district. Uh, my wife uh, works for the district. My mother works for the district as well. I have numerous friends and family that work for the district. Um, and at the end of the day, I just want to be part of this team that that is working together for a common goal. I see that you guys set the policy uh, direction and you assure, assure the fiscal health, all the while balancing everybody's interests, the teachers, the, the parents, the students, and the staff. And I feel that coming from uh, an environment where I've been uh, working with numerous different agencies, personalities, and and conflicts, I can be part of the team that can set the policy directives for this district. So I'll go to the first question I have appointed tonight for the next 11 months. Would, what would be something that you want to accomplish and how would you do it? One thing that I've always been interested in is infrastructure. Um, aside from the, the student success, which is, is a priority, um, infrastructure to me is very important because at the end of the day, we, you know, we've, we've already been through one earthquake, and it was a, a pretty serious earthquake, and, and we're not living in the most stable land. So whatever I can do to get the ball rolling in reference to infrastructure, and I know um, these things take time with bonds and whatnot, but as long as, some, as something starts um, happening. Uh, and that obviously that will be accomplished by working with the board and managing and reviewing all the information that will be available at that time. How would you improve student achievement and student climate at the sites? Um, I know over 200 studies have shown that one of, the, one of the major, if not the major factor in student success is, is how knowledgeable your teacher is and how engaged she is or he. Um, so I believe that instilling and leading the policy directors by ensuring good, good classroom management by having uh, well-trained teachers, which you know, most of them are, but you just got to keep up with that. Um, and if we have good schools, then we're going to have good teachers and good classrooms. Number three, what questions do you have for the board if to help you prepare to take on this commitment if chosen? Uh, currently at this time, I do not have any. Number four, in current fiscal times, how will you prioritize expenditures to ensure quality educational services and student safety? Uh, for that one, I would focus on the necessary expenditures first. What, what needs to be paid? What needs to be, what by law do you need to focus on? And then from there on, I would focus on whatever services that the students need and, and the tools that the teachers will need to um, accomplish that. Number five, um, I might not have the, the broadest experience when it comes to, you know, uh, you know being a teacher or an administrator, um, but as of rec recently, I've, I've been in the classroom um, for, it's, a, it's called Project Lead through my employer. And so what we do is we teach uh, a class to fifth graders, and it's a law enforcement class. So that's given me the opportunity to be back in the classroom, you know, work with the teachers, see how get to know the students, get to know the parents, and get to see what really makes this district function. Um, that's actually one of the reasons that it, 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 when, this was, when this opened up, I, 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 I didn't have to think twice about wondering whether or not I should do it if I'm able to. Um, and number six, I've appointed, is it your intent to run for board in November 2016? And yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Espino. <coughs> Next on our list would be Mr. Bill Hodge. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Finally, we're smiling. I, I thought we were at a funeral. Are you guys okay? Good. <laughs> um, Bill Hodge here. Let me a little bit about myself. Uh, I do live in Calexico. Uh, I've had uh, numerous opportunities to move farther away, and I don't know. It's psychological. I don't want to be away from the border. So I live at 1268 Opal Court in uh, Calexico, California. And uh, I come from Los Angeles, but I consider myself a true Calexican. I've been here since 94. And I was a teacher for 24 years, and I just recently retired. 
and uh, did uh, special ed, uh, social science with all the classes. So I've, I've done the gamut, and I'm, I'm proud of that. Uh, I think that there's a lot of, you know, my lord, I mean, it's just an encyclopedia of the amount of information by Mr. Castillo, uh, which was very important, and I'm, I'm not uh, commenting in a negative place. It was very positive, very, so, but I think what we need to look at is uh, who can best work with you. In my opinion, you are a very progressive board as far as the history of, of what I know and I've experienced at collect school, so I applaud you. First and first foremost, it would be an honor to fit right in with you and work with you. Uh, so I, I feel confident that I could say I have a lot of integrity and principles in, in the area of, of education and in politics and in policy making. And uh, I'm somebody that uh, works very well with others, very well. Um, and I like to think out of the box, but in a very appropriate way. And uh, I think sometimes that's needed. So maybe what we need is some fresh blood here. And I'm certainly someone that would offer that to you and uh, be able to work with all of us together as a team. So that's, that's, that's my little statement. Let me look at the uh, questions here. If appointed tonight for the next 11 months, what would be something you would want to accomplish? Well, first and foremost, as we all know, and we'll restate over and over again, it's the children's uh, safety and higher education. But one thing that concerns me is, as time goes on, some of these schools are, are aging really fast and deteriorating. And I think one of, the, one of the areas that we really need to work on, and I'm sure we have a plan, but I think we need to be aggressive, so we'll work together on that, is infrastructure, like was mentioned the physical safety of the children and the teachers and the administrators and everybody on the campuses. So that's something that needs to be assessed and uh, really looked on and money put aside so we can move forward on that. Because if the kids are tripping and falling and uh, hurting themselves, they're not going to be able to learn very well. Uh, the other thing I'm very big on, whatever we're doing here, to let the community know. And I don't take the attitude that, ah, well, they don't come, so that's their fault. I think that we need to make the, the effort all the time to communicate is in very many ways. So uh, not taking away how you're doing it now, but I think that the budget or other issues on the website uh, and other areas uh, need to be more transparent. And I think we just need to communicate more in a more frequent basis uh, to the community as to what we're doing. Um, I'm very happy that we're getting, getting, we're moving on the pool, but that's a prime example. Um, lots of people were in the dark about the pool. And it wasn't that we weren't working uh, on it, it's just that in many ways we weren't properly communicating to the community. So I think that we need to step up better communication with the community, let them know what we're doing. We, we, it's not enough just to hope that they come here. They can't. A lot of them have two jobs. A lot of them are tired. A lot of them are doing their uh, homework with their children. So we need to find different ways to communicate. Uh, number two, how would you improve student achievement and student climate at the sites? First, let me break that down. In student uh, achievement, I think first and foremost, uh, we need to listen to the teachers as to what they need. And I believe I, I've personally... Uh, and I'm a mentor of Dr. Mendes, and I really don't see any difference of the Common Core with what Mendes was teaching us uh, 20 years ago. I, I am big on Common Core because that pushes critical thinking because the kids are so used to regurgitating and, and being very mechanical, and you've got to do projects with them. You've got to get them to be, able to, to be able to step out of that and think on their feet, and Common Core does that. So we need to really help our teachers a great deal and training them, uh, you know, some teachers already have a great grasp of it, but continuous training. training. Here's another thing that I see, uh, is that for student achievement, we must protect our extracurricular activities. Why? Because research indicates that when you have children that are involved in any kind of extracurricular activity, band, sports, speech, 
drama. They, they develop the character and self-discipline to be high achievers. And they don't necessarily love school. They just know that they have to get things done, just like a lot of us have to do as adults. So be, they, they become very high achievers. So ex, uh, extracurricular activities is very important. How about the student climate at the, stu at, at, at the schools? Student climate. Well, the key word is student. I think we need to learn and find avenues constructively to listen more to our children as to what they want and what they need. We need to make, make it help them see the connection as to what they're doing now and how, how it leads to their future. Because many times the children don't know what the hell they're doing, why they're going from one class to another. They don't, they don't have the big picture for them. And so we need to do more of that because when you have the big picture, you're more motivated. When it's fragmented and you're secluded, you're not as motivated. So we need to listen to what they need and what they want and try to help them in an appropriate way. Give them a voice and allow them to take ownership in many, many areas. What would be wrong with the junior school board? That's just an idea out of the box. Uh, or other kinds of ways so that they can really be a part and not alienate it in the whole school process of their education. Uh, let's see, another question. I don't have any questions for the board yet. I just, I just think that I'm a very good candidate to work with you. Um, and uh, so I hope you really consider that. In current fiscal times, how will you prioritize expenditures to ensure quality educational uh, services and student safety? Number four. First of all, first of all, the priority is, and I'm sure you've done this, is to make sure that our budget, the school budget, is accurate and solvent. Because if it's not solvent, we can't do very much of anything, can we? And if we really don't have an accurate budget, a budget, we don't really know what the heck we're doing. So we need to make sure that when we put that budget together, it is accurate, all the numbers and all the departments, and solvent. And we have to keep it solvent. We have to keep a strong budget. Uh, to ensure quality educational service student safety, um, a safe and clean environment. This includes infrastructure, physical security, and safety, uh, where we have no hazards apparent. And the other basic practical thing is we've got to get more textbooks. I mean, I taught US history, and uh, the last president was George W. Bush. So um, you know, we, we need to upgrade our textbooks. A lot has happened in history or in other areas, and, or just basic needed materials and make sure that the teachers have their resources so that they can ensure quality teaching and education. And again, continuous teaching in Common Core. Number five, what specific knowledge and experience do you have that make you the best candidate for this position? Believe it or not, I like to study on my own. So I've studied the Ed Code by myself, and I learned a great deal, along uh, with uh, the, uh, the, the union. I have 24 years of teaching experience and training and uh, knowledge. I have four years of executive decision and policy making in the city council. Uh, it might be a different animal, but there's a commonality. We sit up here just like you, and we need to make and vote on policy. And uh, four years of working with and studying a budget. I think uh, my some of my strengths are regardless of what the details may come or what the issues may be, uh, that I believe in first and foremost that I'm somebody that believes in team building and a consensus building. Uh, I don't go off by myself. I believe that the only way we can get things done is respecting each other and working together. And uh, 
I tend to stay more calm and be fair and analytical and skillful. And I, I believe one of my greatest strengths is facilitation. I don't want to sound like Donald Trump. Am I sounding like that? That's too egotistical. Okay. Uh, but I think it's important you know because I think you, it's not just the issues. It's the kind of character or person you need. So here I am, fresh blood, a lot of great skills, and it would be an honor to work with the progressive board that you are. So thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Hodge. Yeah, Okay, next on our list would be Mr. Victor Legaspi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And like Mike Castillo said, uh, I've known uh, each one of the candidates for many, many years. Uh, Mike Castillo and I used to play music together when we were, we were kids. We were reminiscing earlier today. Uh, Victor Legaspi, born and raised here. I've... Um, Family's been in politics for many, many, many years. Uh, I've been uh, working for the police department for 26 years. Been a supervisor for about 16 years. I uh, graduated from the University of Phoenix. I have a bachelor's degree in, of course, administration of justice. So I have a lot of uh, uh, in stake, a lot of stuff that's in stake here. I got a family, a uh, child that's in school here, a uh, wife that works for the city. And... Uh, I'm happy to be up here. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and start off with uh, question number one. If appointed tonight for the next 11 months, what would be something you would want to accomplish, and how would you do it? Well, I would bring a variety of ideas to the board. Uh, I would bring in uh, my 26 years of experience as a, as a police officer um, working with a youth as the PAL director many years ago. I was also a school resource officer for the, uh, for the uh, school district. I did a lot of presentations. Uh, I uh, would want to make sure that, uh, that we have a good safe plan going here, a good safety um, thing that's happening in our, in our school district. There's a lot of things that's happening in our world right now uh, regarding to uh, crime and so forth, and I'll, I'll bring that up later on. Um, I, would we, I would want to make sure that all policies are in track as a uh, police officer, as a supervisor for 16 years, I adhere at policies. I talk to my subordinates regarding the policies, and I make sure that policies are, uh, are done, are done well. I've helped create policies uh, with administration. Uh, I would want to contact the superintendent and have uh, her keep me up, up to speed in regarding to what's going on, the liability issues out there. Are we being sued? Are we not being sued? And if we're being sued, what's going on? Are, are, how can we correct this? Uh, I'm a hands-on type of a person. I like to uh, grab things and just uh, uh, work forward on it. Uh, I would want to know uh, what is being taught, uh, what are our local school expectations, what's, what's happening around our district. Um, question number two, how would you improve student achievement and student climate sites? There's always room for, for improvement. I know in the law enforcement uh, aspects, uh, we're always improving. Uh, we're always being uh, taught. Uh, every two years, we go through some form of training. And I believe that teachers should go through some form of training. I, I do understand that you guys are, the instructors are going through some form of training. Uh, to make the Eclectic uh, Unified District uh, strong with benefits, the students being taught, make sure, making sure that students are taught well. Uh, like I said, uh, I would I would be there and to, just to make sure that the curriculum is is working, working with the board members, uh, working with teachers, and going on sites and so forth, school sites. Positive change will always uh, be welcomed. Envision instructional methods and materials. Um, make sure that the teachers work one on one with the students. That's very very important. Um, you know, uh, classroom settings. It would be nice to make it a smaller setting so that we can have that one-on-one -on -one contact uh, of a student and teacher. Uh, I, you know, when my daughter came to the, uh, to the school district here, she was number 13. I didn't get that until, you know, finally uh, it, it, I found out why she was number 13. She was a 13th student. Uh, the instructor later found out what my daughter's name was. 
um, there's always uh, something new out there. Uh, I would look at other resources in the community, such as the library, uh, making sure that our kids are, are uh, learning out there. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, just uh, obviously within the school settings, but, you know, take them out there. Uh, take them out to the museum. The library has a lot of resources out there. In the police force, we were taken to a museum called the uh, Tolerance of Violence, and it's a, it was a, a museum that where we saw how the uh, Jewish people were being treated and so forth in Germany years ago. And it's something that we need to expand with our youth, take them out there. Uh, field trips, important field trips, not only take them to the, you know, the fire department and this is a fire truck, this is a police car, you know, give them something that they, where they're going to learn or what they're going to learn. Do incentive programs, uh, accelerated programs that would, conduct, that, that would be conducted. Make learning fun. I know that Mr. Calderon did a, uh, uh, an accelerated reading program in December where people were, uh, I, I, I believe they want a bicycle for doing an outstanding job. It's something that, that it's, it's an awesome thing to do. Make it fun for the students. Make it fun for these, for these kids to want to come and learn. You know. Uh, question number three. What questions do you have for the board to help you prepare to take this commitment if chosen? What is important? Well, obviously, you don't have to answer that. But what is important to them at this moment? How can I help out? What can I do? What can I do to help resolve any pending issues? Uh, I just don't want to be that person in the background. I want to be there up front helping out. How can I be a board member that is needed at this time, at this time of what's going on in our world, in our city, in our county? What is your uh, belief as a whole? Is there any team development in the future dates? Is there any other meetings with parents? Not only once a month, every Thursday at a, at a board meeting. Do, is, is there meetings that where a board member can show up where a parent has concerns with, it, with, with their kids? You know, something that we can, you know, if it's not being done, it's something that, you know, that I would love to set up. A one-on-one meeting with the, with the, uh, with the parents and the kids. In a current fiscal time, how will you prioritize expenditures to ensure the quality educational service and student safety? Prior, prioritize the importance on what's needed for the students. Students comes first. Mr. Hodge said that. They come first. Uh, they are our future. I honestly believe that. Make sure that there is success for those uh, well-needed programs. Get rid of the bad programs, the programs that are, that are succeeding, make, making sure that it, it continues to go forward. Make sure that whatever's being spent, it's at a high level of importance when it comes to the quality of education. Know the true cost before doing business with outside entity. Student safety comes first. And make sure that there is funding materials and educational needs for both teachers, students, and parents. And we need to sell the safety thing for our, our teachers and staff. The other day I came over um, uh, here at the district uh, and uh, I noticed that in order to pass these doors, you have to sign your name in. I saw a teacher that got upset. The teacher tells the staff, why do I have to sign my name? This is the third time that I come here. The staff goes, no, no, that's the rule. You have to sign your name in. Haven't people been seeing the news? What happened at San Bernardino? You know, these people have been working for this company for several years, and all of a sudden, they did what they did. Safety comes first. You got disgruntled employees out there. I'm not saying here at our school district, but in the future, that may happen. We need to sell that to, the, to everyone, to all the teachers and staff. I will work to see if we can bring back the school resource uh, program. I've worked on grants before. You know, I got great contacts at the Calexico Police Department. Hint, hint. Been there for 26 years. Um, I would work on grants. I would help whoever's developing grants in bringing back the school resource officer. I do believe that our police officers should be patrolling our schools. You know, there's confidence. I go to a, a school site. There's, a, there's one particular school site that I won't mention where I can go in and nobody, I don't have to sign, sign my name in, maybe because they know who I am, right? <laughs> but, uh, but I, as a, you know, if elected as a board member, I would go in and sign my name on every school site that I would go to. <clears throat> because if there's an earthquake, if there's a problem, if something happens, there's a shooting, where was Victor Legaspi? Where was the last place he was at? 
Well, he was at Kiki Kamerana. How do you know that? He signed his name in. So school safety is the number one priority, as you can tell. What specific knowledge and experience do you have that makes the best candidates for this position? I have worked with the youth for many, for many years, for 26 years. Um, Javier Moreno was, our, I believe, our first school resource officer. He did project lead. And after Javier Moreno, I took over the school resource, as a school resource officer, and I enjoyed it. I was there for about two and a half years. I worked with Jeanette, Janet. I worked with her. We had fun. Uh, I do believe that a uniform officer should visit, uh, home, do home visits. We don't have that anymore. I used to work with Apollo de la Garza, if anybody remembers him. We used to do home visits. I was a uniform guy. He showed up. We never had to call the, the police department because we were there. Take over. Resolve the solution. You know, if the student needed to go to jail, then I took him to jail, but Rarely did we ever do anything like that or do juvenile halls because the officer was there one-on-one -on -one with a student and the parent. I was a director of the police athletic leagues for many years. I worked with a lot of youth. I was an SRO, as I've said. I brought in programs such as the talent show where we brought in our youth to come in and, and, and show off their talents. Uh, I directed the kids and badge program where we, where we brought our Calexico underprivileged youth We've been doing it for 11 years. So as you can tell, I am youth-oriented, student-oriented for, for our school district. I was once part of the Imperial Valley Gang Coalition at uh, IBC. And I believe there's another coalition that's, uh, that's coming up uh, in, our, in our district, and it's been uh, adopted, adopted from uh, other cities. Uh, I've been involved in the SARB program. If appointed, is it your intent to run for board in November, the tw November 2016? Yeah. I'm not the type of person that starts something and then 11 months later, oh, well, I'm done. <clears throat> you know, you, put, you stick me into any task-oriented position, I go forward. That's the way I am in the police department. I accomplish my mission. You can't do it in 11 months on some of the missions. It takes a couple of years, two or three years, to do that. There will be projects that will be able to be, there won't be ob projects, obviously, that will be able to be accomplished in one year. It will take time. If given the chance, um, there will be a lot of trust on me, and, uh, and uh, we'll do good as a group, as a team. I do believe as. <laughs> As, uh, as working as a team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Legaspi. Next on our list is Mr. Javier Moreno. <coughs> think of education as a means of developing our greatest abilities, because in each of us... <laughs> Thank you. There is a private hope and dream which fulfilled can be translated into benefit for everyone and greater and strength for our nation. Um, that was the 35th President John F. Kennedy, July 25th, 1961. Uh, good evening, school board. Uh, President Calderon, Vice President Ortega, board members Calderon, Real and Superintendent Ambris. Uh, my name is Javier Moreno. Tonight I'm seeking a provisional uh, board member appointment. As you know, a school board member takes one of the most important citizens' responsibilities in overseeing the education of community's youth. I believe 2016 will bring new challenging, challenging times for public education in Calexico. I am seeking this opportunity to working collectively with the board and to rise above those challenges so I can help students succeed. I'm here tonight because I believe <clears throat> split, explicitly in the value of public education because I'm dedicating serving um, and teaching all children and because I believe in, in the democratic process and understand that my role is to act strategically in line with the interests 
of the collect skills school community. My professional experience is comprised of an extensive 32-year uh, law enforcement career, 18 years with the collect school police department, and <clears throat> 14 years as a special agent with the California Department of Justice. That's his, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. During the, uh, my, uh, my time with the Colesco Police Department, I had the opportunity to work as a school resource officer <coughs> and participate in various school uh, activities. Um, <clears throat> my participation involved many parent-teacher parent -teacher meetings at different school sites in the role of supporting and improving schools. The coordination of all my activities with the principal and staff members concerning guidance and advice prior, prior to enacting any programs within the school. Also during this time, I get ex extensive experience in understanding the community and school staff, staff. I learned school governance is creating a strong relationship with the public, and to be an effective board member, I must know and respect my community and encourage the community's trust in its school system. My personal experience entails Growing in Collect School, attending schools, and graduating from Collect School High School in 1978. I raised uh, four children, all whom have graduated from Collect School High School, and, and I am proud to say that one of them was the re recipient of uh, Bill Gates' uh, Millennium Award. <clears throat> My educational journey has allowed me to obtain a master's degree in criminal justice, and at present I am pursuing a doctoral degree in management and organizational leadership from the University of Phoenix. I believe students who gain college education often have higher lifetime earnings and a variety of other benefits, including a better quality of life. I believe a college education is so beneficial and has become the necessary admission ticket to good jobs and middle class lifestyles. <clears throat> Having said that, I stand for three things academic excellence, exclusiveness, and fiscal responsibility. Academic, academic excellence can be accomplished through innovative teaching outreach and combining education with practical problem solving. It's about being intellectually rigorous and keeping those opportunities open to all students. It can and should be done. I believe you never stop learning, never stop achieving your, your fullest potential. I am equally committed to supporting collect school students. Fiscal responsibility entails maximizing output but prioritizing from our existing resources. <clears throat> I will now answer uh, question number one. If appointed tonight for the next 11 months, what would be something you would want to accomplish and how would you do it? I have many thoughts on the topic. One of my goals is to help uh, all collectible students prepare to enter a world that is increasingly dominated by technology. To provide an expand model of a technological education that seamlessly integrates technology in all academic aspects so that each student is well prepared to tackle some of the world's most challenging problems once they graduate from high school. For, the, for example, the medical field, engineering, and of course the criminal justice system that are all dependent on technology nowadays. In this scenario, one priority, priority that comes to mind is to coherently and compre comprehensively address how to build on the four core educational assurance areas such as creating student-central learning environments designed to significantly improve teaching and learning through the personalization of strategies, tools, and support for teachers and students. Another priority would be to continue to increase the effectiveness of teachers and expand students' access to the most effective teachers to raise student achievement and decrease achievement gap across students' group, but increase the rates at which students graduate from high school. <clears throat> Another priority would be to communicate with the public by responding to telephone calls and emails and attending meetings. <clears throat> I will participate in all board meetings and attend school events and community functions that would help me to respond to those concerns raised by, those, by my constituents. First, <clears throat> because I have worked with and on behalf of school particularly important for, import, for two important reasons. First, because <clears throat> I, when I was a school resource officer, I have the opportunity to work with, with staff and parents and, and students and I gained excessive knowledge into what is needed. I believe my success relies on my ability to be a positive role model so I can make a positive difference. My responsibility, responsibility as a board member needs to be exercised in a way that achieves results and garners respect. 
This is particularly important now as Congress moved to reauthorize the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Secondly, because it indicates that my support in Colexico's education policymaking is being reset, providing an opportunity for the school board to demonstrate just how effective how effective we can be formulating sound policies, ensuring the accountability and making decisions. In other words, school, our school board can be, can be a model for leadership that Calexico citizens expect just from, from any other level of government. Excuse. How would you improve student achievement and student climate sites? <clears throat> I would improve the student achievement and student climate site at schools, at school sites, with long-term strategies that have been set by the board to exp to, ex to expand district initiatives that support academic excellence across the school district, including expanding a number of faculty, investing in resources to facilitate the teaching and learning, and increasing technology in classrooms. In addition, provide updates on the various programs available to our students at school at all school sites. I believe as we become more student-centered scholarly community that represents the highest centers and the best academic values in college school, school district, my goal will be to continue to build on those qualities while enhancing the student achievement model that helps make Calexico unique. In addition to our other school site meetings, as a board member, I would host or attend meetings between faculty and students to discuss ways to improve the productivity and excellence of teaching and technology across school sites. Number three, what questions do you have for the board to help you prepare to take on this commitment as chosen? As you're probably aware, President Obama has signed into law H.R. 2029 that consolidates appropriations bills to, uh, to provide more than $1 billion increase in K-12 education investments including a 500, 500 million increase in Title I grants for disadvantaged students and 415 million increase in special education grants to states and school districts. Based on past experiences in 2015, my question to you, Board, is do you see, what do you see as the most significant challenges you will face this year, both as an individual board member and collectively as a governing board? <clears throat> Number four, in current fiscal times, how would you prioritize expenditures to ensure quality, educational services, and student safety? One way to prioritize expenditures to ensure quality and educational services and student safety is by creating and proposing a fiscal budget and a strategic plan that will not only help close the gap by providing college students a strong start, but also ensure the graduation from high school and beyond. The district budget is the financial plan for implementing the strategic plan. In terms of strategic plan, my goal would be to increase achievement for each student by ensuring access to existing programs, addressing diverse educational needs, and providing access technology and digital curriculum. I will coordinate the development of the district budget with the district strategic plan to equitably allocate resources such as people, time, funds, materials, and technology for necessary support and appropriate services for all programs and personnel, including but not li limited to professional learning, classroom teachers, support personnel, administrative personnel and students, and behavioral and psychological needs. Continue to implement a comprehensive curriculum driven to promote collaboration, parent involvement, and community partnership maintain high levels of effectiveness, efficiency, and equity in our operations to support student achievement and maintain a safe and secure schools to enhance learning environment for students and staff. Last, continue with the Safe Routes to School Community Workshops that is in union with the counties, with Imperial County's Safe Routes to School Master Plan. Number five, what specific knowledge and experiences do you have to, that make you the best candidate for this position? Based on my extensive public safety service, I am a leader who is willing to take risk, be supportive of board colleagues, district staff, and community, a team player that helps promote the board's vision and goals. And I am an effective communicator. 
I, I can clearly describe what I want and what others want. I am a good listener. I am consensus builder, whereby I am capable of working toward decisions that the board can support and willing to compromise, and I'm willing to compromise to achieve those goals. I am a community participant. By that I mean that as a member of this community, I enjoy meeting with a diverse group of people, particularly I can identify, identify with government leaders and key community members, thereby reaching out of the community. I am a decision maker. I am comfortable making decisions that can support individual, individuals, but most importantly, importantly, group decision making. In this case, individual trustees and the governing board. If appointed, it is your intent is it your intent to run for board in November 2016? My answer is yes. I believe my responsibility as a school board member will take me beyond 20, uh, November 2016. I will not only have the, taken the responsibility of administrating the many challenges that collect to public education, but, I'll, but would also find satisfaction in resolving tough challenges so that Calexico youth can succeed. I believe one district priority is to, is to offering high quality instruction to prepare students for college and careers, but as a main goal of the district strategic plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moreno. Next on our list is Callahan Ramirez. Hello, my name is Callahan Ramirez. I'm from Mexicali. I live here in Calexico um, 15 years ago. And my kids, yeah, my I have three kids. My kids came in here in, um, in the school. Thank you. And I'm always involved in the activities for my kids in the school and extra whatever activity that uh, they have. So um, right now I'm interested in here because I want to be part of any change or um, any anything better that we can do for them. So, okay. Um, can you sum a little bit the questions, please? No, they're not here. Do you have it? No. Did you get a letter? No, but I might actually be sorry. Thank you. Okay, the first question is, if appointed tonight for the next 11 months, what would be something um, you would want to accomplish in how, and how would you do it? Well, I think we need better installations uh, for the kids, and I believe that we can um, motivate to have um, everything that they need for the um, extra classes and... Um, some of the kids would like to participate in, in many different, I don't know, uh, activities in the school, um, volleyball, um, the high school uh, band, and they're afraid to do it because, or they're um, stopping to do it because they don't have um, the economical part to, to be there. So I would like to have... Um, like programs to provide them with everything that they need. Um, if they're on band, the, if the instruments, if they're on baseball, whatever they need. So um, that's what I like to do for them. Um, and also, um, I would like to have programs for the teachers where they can register to motivate the teachers and the students to participate in different events and be more competitive um, uh, for um, prepare them to for college and and everything. So um, maybe that would be interesting if if we have a, um, a program where they can register and be motivated to push our kids to be better and, and more competitive for for their future. Um, 
Question number two is how would you improve students' achievement and student climate at, at the sites? Okay, um, I've been thinking about this um, question and I would have service, maybe they're making service for the teachers, but the, um, having the surveys uh, from the students to the teachers, give them the feedback, supervise um, the actions that they would have, and um, work with the teachers so the students can see, can see any changes and um, well maybe the teachers will be more motivated to be better and the students will be happy to see any changes and have better teachers also. Um, question number three, um, what questions do you have for the board? I don't have any questions right now. In current fiscal times, how would you, how would you prioritize expeditions to ensure quality quality educational services and students, student safety. Okay, well, prioritize. I would like to work with the teachers, the students, and the board, the public, and see what's, um, what they can think it's better for the kids, okay? Always having in mind the best for the kids. Um, what specific knowledge and experience do you have that make you the best candidate for this position? Okay, as I said, I'm coming from Mexicali. I have only 15 years here in Calexico, but I think I, I could be a um, good candidate because I'm, I can see that things different. I have all my school in Mexicali. So yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I have the certificate in um, international business and customs. I have a diploma for um, 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 management, and I hardly believe that we can um, make a difference and that I can see things different because I'm coming from a different um, school. And um, I'm, a, I'm part right now of the booster club for the Calexico High School Band. And that's one of the reasons I, I become more interested in be part of the board, <coughs> okay? And if appointed it is in your intent to run the board, yes, of course. That's it, that, that's all that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Ramirez. This will conclude our uh, uh, section C1 of the interview process. Uh, we want to thank every and uh, every one of you for being here tonight. Uh, it shows, like many of you guys, many like many of you said, it shows commitment not only to your children but to the whole city of Calexico. So. Uh, on behalf of the board and the school district, I would like to thank everybody for being here and uh, spending the time here. You could be doing something better uh, with your families or, or doing other things, as they say. But uh, thank you for being here tonight. At this point, we will take a short recess, and we should be back in five minutes at 6.22, 6.25. Thank you. It's now 6.30 on Tuesday, January 5th, on this special board meeting for the uh, vacancy and appointment process. So at this time, we're going to go ahead with C, uh, C2, selection of, uh, selection of a board member. What's going to happen is at this point, each one of us will uh, write down a name of a candidate that we would like to submit for consideration. So we're gonna put it on this piece of paper, we're gonna put it, and Janet, are you going to collect the four names? 
Yes, the, you, oh yeah, you can collect the four names, Janet. And at that point, randomly, somebody will pick a name. And uh, when that name is picked, uh, if there's a mo if somebody wants to make a motion, and there's a second, and then we will have a vote. Uh, just so just so you know, we don't we do not have to choose a candidate tonight. Uh, that is that is that is our uh, that's our option to either choose or not choose a candidate tonight. And uh, uh, if we do choose a candidate tonight, or if somebody's appointed tonight, that person will take a, it will take place. The appointment will take place immediately uh, with that 30 day to, 30 day uh, professional appointment. Uh, so at this point. And if we don't, and if we don't pick tonight, uh, then uh, if nobody's chosen tonight, or if there's not, there's not a majority, uh, uh, if there's not a majority vote for any candidate, what is going to happen is, uh, that once the deadline of 60 days has passed, the county superintendent of schools, in this case, Dr. Finnell, he has the right, and he will uh, order a special election. Uh, which most likely will happen and on the next regular election, which will take place on June, June six, June fourth, June six, in some some sometime in, in June, on the first week of June, which will be uh, one of the pri the primary election uh, because of we have elections here in Calexico for the June and then November. Okay. So, if there's no more questions or comments. Board, please go ahead. First name is Orlando Espino. Board, is there a motion to uh, to uh, uh, to appoint Orlando Espino? Motion to appoint. There's a motion on the board, on the floor by Mr. Ortega for Orlando Espino. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Ms. Real. Any further questions or comments? And no further questions or comments. All those in, play, in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 No. No. Mo a motion uh, doesn't pass. Uh, Janet? Take notes. The next name is Ms. Callahan Ramirez. There's some, the name Callahan Ramirez uh, came up next. Is there a motion on the floor to appoint Callahan Ramirez to the board? I will make a motion to appoint Callahan Ramirez to the board. Is there a second? Motion dies for lack of second. Ms. Um, uh, Janet, next name. Next name is Mr. Mike Castillo. The next name up is Michael Castillo. Is there a motion to appoint Michael Castillo to the board? Motion to appoint. There's a motion on the floor to appoint Michael Castillo uh, to the board. Is there a second? I will second that motion. The, any further questions or comments? You no know, further questions or comments. All those in favor of appointing Mr. Michael Castillo to the board signify by saying aye. 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 No. No. Motion dies. That was number three. Number four. 
It would be Mr. Orlando Espino, but you guys have voted on this name already. Okay. Is there, again, is there a motion to, the, name, the next name up was Orlando Espino. Is there a motion to appoint Orlando Espino to the board? Motion to appoint. There's a motion on the board by Mr. On the floor by Mr. Ortega to appoint Orlando Espino. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Ms. Real. You know, for the questions or comments, all those in favor of appointing Mr. Orlando Espino signify by saying aye. 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 No. No. Motion dies. Or doesn't pass, I should say. So at this point, what happens is, at this point, we just did, we just completed one round of names. Uh, Again, we, we, we will go for a second round of names, and again, we don't, have to, uh, we don't have to appoint anybody tonight. Once all the eight names or once there's no more appointments or names, uh, we will have to go with the next, and the, for the next, to the next level of this meeting or to the next uh, point, which will be to uh, uh, call for a special election once Mr. Uh, Dr. Fennell decides that he needs to call for a special election. So. Thank you. First name is Mr. Javier Moreno. The name of Mr. Javier Moreno came up on the list. Uh, is there a motion to appoint Javier Moreno to the board? I make a motion to approve. There's a motion by Ms. Real to appoint Javier Moreno. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Mr. Ortega. Any further questions or comments? If no further questions or comments, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 No. No. Motion doesn't pass. Janet, next name, please. Somebody didn't vote. Okay. Next person would be Miss Norma Aguilar. The next name on the list that came up is Norma Aguilar. Is there a motion to appoint Norma Aguilar to the board? Motion to appoint. There's a motion by Mr. Ortega to appoint Norma Aguilar to the board. Is there a second? A second. There's a second by Ms. Real. Any further questions or comments? If none, all those in favor of appointing Ms. Norma Aguilar to the board, please signify by saying aye. 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 No. Aye. Motion passes three to one. All those voting in favor are Ms. Yeah. Uh, those voting in favor are Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon, Jr., and Mr. Ortega. Uh, voting against is myself, Mr. Calderon. Ms. Aguilar, congratulations. You are now appointed to the board. <laughs> okay, item C3, administered order of office of appointment to appointed board member.
I Normandila do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies against all enemies foreign and domestic foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith that, that I will bear true faith and allegiance and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California that I take this obligation freely that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or with, purpose of evasion without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion and that I will tell and faithfully discharge that I will well and faithfully discharge that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter the duties upon which I am to enter and congratulations thank you, thank you. Item C4, welcome and seating of our new board member to the Board of Education, Ms. Aguilar. Yes. Okay, so congratulations, Ms. Norma Aguilar, as a fifth uh, member of this board. And uh, at this point, I would like uh, to go to item B, adjournment. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. There's a Second. motion to adjourn. And is it before? You know what? I take that back. Let's take it back. Take it back. I retract my motion. <laughs> <laughs> take that back. That. Yes, exactly. Uh, Ms. Norma Aguilar? Would you like to, uh, do you have any comments? Um, I just want to thank the board for the opportunity to serve again. Um, we had really, really good candidates tonight, and uh, I am honored that you, you chose, you chose me to fulfill this duty, and I will faithfully do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Aguila. So, members of the board? Do you have any comments? Uh, the only thing I want to say is the same thing she said. Um, you know, we had really good candidates today. I want to thank everybody for coming out here and throwing their hat in. Uh, I know what it feels like to be on the other side. I was there not too long ago, and now I'm on this side. So I have a little taste of both sides. So I just want to say congratulations to everybody. And, you know, I know we're having uh, elections next year. So, you know, if you guys are still interested, come and compete because – I'm still going to be here, and I'm going to be running, too. So just congratulations to everybody who, who came out here. That's all I wanted to say. Well, good evening. I'd like to echo what Ms. Priscilla and Ms. Aguilar said. Um, thank you for coming out. It looks like our community is invested in, in, in our kids. Um, again, it took me – I was there. I interviewed twice, and I had to go to the polls to be here. So don't give up. All I can say, if you believe in Colexico – I'll see you in November, and good luck. Um, happy New Year, and hopefully we can make this year a wonderful year. Thank you. I, too, would like to say thank you for your participation and your commitment to this community. I, too, participated in the process of appointment. Um, Mr. Cuevas, you were involved in that as well. Again, like Mr. Calderon said, don't give up. I also ran in an election, and luckily I won, and I'm honored to, to sit here. And uh, to Trustee Aguilar, welcome back. It wasn't too long ago you were mentoring me through, through this. Happy to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. 
And well, I want to echo what every single one of these board members have said before. Uh, this is not an easy process. It's never an easy process. And uh, the, fact, the fact that we have not only candidates, but qualified candidates that are willing to spend the time and money to be here. Uh, and I say money because it is, time is money. And it is not just two meetings a month, okay? These uh, being on the board means being on the school sites, being visible, talking to, to students, talking to parents, talking to the community. So that's, that's what I mean when I say time and money. So thank you for being uh, uh, too willing to do that for Calexico, for our kids. And Ms. Aguilar, again, congratulations and welcome back to the board. And uh, hopefully we can get things done from, uh, from now until November when we go again for uh, another, another year. So. If you would allow me um, Thank you, a couple of seconds, Mr. Calderon. Mm -hmm. I, of course, welcome Ms. Norma Aguilar back to the board. Her wealth of experience definitely is, is always needed and, and welcome, so welcome back. And uh, for the candidates that are here tonight, uh, as our trustees have stated, you know, it's just, it was an honor just to um, see you here tonight and, and, and see that you are so willing to participate I encourage you to continue to participate with our district. I took a lot of copious notes, and I hope that you don't mind if I occasionally call you all and, and, and ask you for your input and your, your advice. And, and I continue to hope that you will uh, pursue um, service in our district, whether it be at the dives or whether it be at our school sites, or, and especially when it comes to safety and moving our students forward and, uh, to become the best that they can be. So thank you very much. And, we do appreciate your time. Thank you, Ms. Ambri. So, with no more questions or comments, we will move to item B, to adjourn. Is there a, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. There's a motion by Mr. Calderon Jr. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Mr. Ortega. All those in favor, please second five by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 5-0. Voting in favor are Ms. Aguilar, Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, and myself, Mr. Calderon. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. It is now 6:49. And please feel free to uh, to get uh, some some of the food that we.